Okay. Hey, welcome, 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 parents. Thank you for uh, this is our second showing of Miss Stacy's class, so uh, we're glad all you were able to make it for our second performance. Okay. Um, we come in like this every day. Um, they're nice and quiet. That's so good, aren't they? It lets me know that they're ready to touch those instruments that are, uh, you know, they're expensive. They need to last a long time, so we want to make sure we do that. All right, we need your help first before we start, so uh, we need you to clap. <laughs> instruments out, they have to take care of them, so they're going to start doing that. Um, they do this, put this stuff on called rosin on their boats. Sticky tree set helps their boats work. I get to tune all the instruments while we're getting things ready. So, we each have our jobs. Oh man, that's okay. For they're going to get that ready, and I come around and check all the tuning. Um, I usually get asked, don't they just come to me from the factory? <laughs> Unfortunately, violins don't work that way. They're made out of wood, so if you had a sticky door that sticks in the winter or the summer, doesn't fit quite right, because it's a wood door, nice wood door. Violence. They're sensitive feel. to change in okay, getting this to temperature, especially in the winter when the heat goes on. We find that all the violence suddenly get out of tune. And you know what? We've been tuning them really well <coughs> on Monday. But there's always one to find <laughs> So it's better to just check them. Right. Oh yeah, we see some of our students demonstrating their rest position when they're finished. That's good. All right, rest positions are a safe way to hold a violin. We did this way before we even played, so I think we're all ready in a week like five or six when they're standing in rest position, right? It might have been week six or seven by the time we were standing in rest position with a bow. Violins, small steps. Oh, come on in, come on in, join us. Small steps, one step at a time. <clears throat> Just like getting older. By the time you get to an event like this, you know a lot. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when they have strings, so, but then I have a different school on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so. I know what it's like to have that in our kids' schedule. Got to remember what school to go to, huh? And what time. Hey, we're all tuned. Looks like everybody's in rest position. This looks really good. Um, so they got their bows pointed down to the floor, that way if it, uh, falls, 
it's not going to fall very far. And if it's pointed down towards the door, it's not pointed towards your neighbor. So that's really impactful too. Okay, that no one's getting you anything. Our scrolls are out. Um, hey, um, then after that, we learned our best posture. So uh, well, first we found our bow holds. We found out there's a special way to hold the bow when you play the violin. It just makes it sound the best. And it was, you know, 400 years ago, we discovered that this made the violin sound the best. And no one's really came up with a better way since. So, um, and then, uh, oh, we're covering our shoulders with our violin. They do something with their feet. They're zipped and stepped. That's good. So I see a lot of violins up this way. Our first song, Chicken on a Fence Post. It's about a chicken on a fence post. Vincent's going to give it away, okay. He climbed down the ladder to eat his 
Oh, he ate the banana when he got there. Okay, good. All right. Very, very good. All right. Okay. Monkey song. You might also notice it goes up in pitch when we're climbing up the ladder and going back down. It's something we usually refer to as kind of a scale. Since, uh, since we're not going to do anything new today, it's a good chance for me to talk to the parents and audience members that are here. So this is the time I usually do that. Um, so, hey, thank you for coming. And uh, first thing I'd like to say is I thank them for playing for you because they're doing a really good job. Um, they're focusing. They got audience watching them. They got cameras watching them. 
Um, they can watch themselves later. It's putting on it's putting on Claymont's YouTube page, so um, they, they can watch themselves play later and, and things like that. You can send it to people that can't make it. So we're, we're really um, this is the first year that we've had the Claymont Live team um, recording it for us and, and broadcasting it live. So hello to those people that are watching it at home or at work or wherever they are. Um, so so they get an opportunity to see that. Um, I do like to talk a little bit about things that are up and coming. Um, this is our last open house today for this class. Um, uh, so they're going to have strings next week and then a long break. Um, and then we're going to start learning some new stuff for our next concert coming up. Uh, our next performance is March 1st. And that will be an evening performance. So there will be, since there's four classes, we'll have four performances that evening. So there'll be a 6, a 6.37, and a 7.30. So look for the schedule coming up for when their class will, will perform for that performance. Um, this year, something new. If, you're, uh, if you've been to a third grade performance before, there's always something new that changes because things change and evolve. Um, uh, this year, uh, Mr. Hawkins has been teaching them lots of recorder playing. And you might have even heard some recorders at home, so um, which is great. They're already learning how to practice and play at home and show you what they're learning at school. So that's very exciting. Um, and we thought it was so exciting that we should have, have, have them the opportunity to play their violins at this performance, but also their recorders. So they're going to they're gonna do a little bit of recorder playing um, at this concert, too, um, whatever they know. And uh, I, then we're pretty much to the end of the year after that concert. We'll keep doing strings all the way to the rest of the year. But I do like to talk about fourth grade a little bit because the fourth grade program is different and there's a little more that parents need to know. So um, going out of second grade, didn't know much about strings other than they're going to be in strings and they're going to learn how to play the violin. Isn't that awesome? Okay. Um, and then we took care of everything. The instruments are all here. They come in and play them and then they leave. Um, fourth grade gets a little more serious. It's a little bit different. Um, I'll send home information usually in April about signing up for strings. Um, and this will have some information about the uh, fourth grade string program and about the instruments. Because in fourth grade, the families provide an instrument that they bring to school and carry home. They're all over there. Those are all my fourth grade instruments. They brought them, put them on the racks and they'll come in and play them. Um, they'll also, at the end of the day, take them home. So it'll be a lot like the recorders where they'll get them out and they can play them at home and you can hear them play at home. You don't have to wait until the concert to come see them. All right. Um, so you're coming into a performance to see how they're doing playing together with all their friends. All right. So the good news is, is they get to play them at home because a lot of them are really excited to play and want to play more. Um, the other good news is uh, once you're playing more than 30 minutes twice a week, usually you get a lot better quicker. All right, so um, this is really helpful to, to students that, you know, it's a skill. If, you, if you're playing something physical, sometimes it helps to have a little more practice at it. All right, so if, if someone struggled a little bit in third grade keeping up with pace or anything like that, they'll have some time to practice at home. They can even catch up and, and do better like that. All right, and then we have those kids that are ready to move on and, and, and do faster pieces and learn quicker, um, and they can have their instrument at home and move ahead even more. So it it's really gives them a chance to work at their, their level and, and really get better uh, um, grow as musicians and violins. All right, the other thing that's different in fourth grade, uh, we all have violins here. you notice they're different sizes. Okay, so we fit the violin to the person. <laughs> This is my size. This is mostly the front row, third grade size. Okay. And then our back rows, they, they get a little bigger as we move to the back. So, um, that's, so that's a little different. Um, there's uh, options of instruments next year. Uh, they can stick with the violin. If they like the violin. I want to keep doing that. That sounds great. Okay. Um, great. We need that. Okay. There's also a little bit more of a choice. So it's up to, to parents and families to decide. Um, they can switch to what's called a viola, which will look pretty much like the violin, only it's not going to have that high string. So if your student doesn't like that high-pitched sound of that thin string, then they might switch to something called a viola that's about the same. It's the middle of the orchestra, has a lower string instead of that high one. So, so that's a little bit about that one. The reason I talk about this now, you might think fourth grade's a long way off, 
is because I have visuals that I can show you. All right. So the cellos, um, these are like fourth grade size cellos. And remember, we talked about fourth graders bringing them to school and back. So you might see a fourth grader or a fifth grader with a cello on their back. And they're also carrying their backpack with them at the same time. So um, just something to make sure we think about before you do it. So and uh, and I have the adult size, so go here with a long term thinker. So long term thinker. So they'll take up this much room in your car or house. Okay. Uh, just just. FYI about that. Um, cello is going to have that lower sound. The kids are definitely going to sit when you play the cello. It's not a stand-up instrument. Um, however, the bass, we don't get many bass players. And we caught that on video. Right. Don't get many bass players, and uh, you, you probably noticed the reason why. Um, it's really mostly just to do with the size of the instrument and everything that has to do with that. So um, it's taller than me. So imagine a third grader or a fourth grader next year. It would probably be pretty big for them. They're probably going to need help carrying it um, for, for more than short distances. Um, it's a stand-up instrument, so they got to like standing up all right, while they're playing. All right. um, it's also about this size. This is the smallest space I have. Okay. So um, this would be a very small fourth grader. Most of my fourth graders play a bigger bass than that. Um, and so this much space in your house, too, and car, and um, that kind of thing. Um, you also might, uh, some people think about cost more wood, less wood, least amount of wood. Okay. Um, so to make them, they're going to be cost more, and to maintain them, they're going to cost more. And so things like that uh, sometimes are factored in. Um, when you're talking about instruments. Okay, um, so a little bit about those instruments. Fourth grade, we do do concerts a little differently. It's not usually just their class. They'll do the open house like this, but they'll, if you'll notice, we do three performances. One's a district level concert where you hear all of the fourth grade and all the districts play together. And then the other one's a school performance where we play for the school in an assembly with all the fourth grade classes combined in one big group. And then we also do a night concert with all the fourth grade classes combined in one group. Okay. So that's a, a little bit about the difference that's happened next year. All right, hey, we've been sitting a while. We've been talking a lot. So let's stand up. So now this is around the time that they've learned all their stuff and they've practiced everything new. All right, parents have learned everything new. So they can think about it. All right, and uh, we're going we're to play a piece called the train song. So, train song's about a train. Train starts slow, so we'll get the train going.